In this video, we'll show you the process for repacking a crossflow cooling tower with Brentwood's XF75 Pro bottom supported block fill. This tower that supports Brentwood's injection molding machines had a sudden large decrease in performance. Looking inside the tower, you can see a portion of the factory hanging sheets have torn from the hangers. This is causing several issues. It's allowing a lot of air bypass that reduces the performance. The tower has seen a drift increase because the integrated drift eliminators aren't intact. And we had a lot of water hitting the louvers, causing scaling deposits in that area. Here we'll show you step by step how to get this back to original performance with an easy to install XF75 Pro bottom supported fill. The first step is to remove all of the existing louvers and hanging sheets. The louvers are easily removed and tossed aside. In this case, the hanging sheet is fairly brittle and you can see it's not hard to rip from the hangers and toss it to the side. If you have sheets that are still pliable, you may be faster to cut them with a saw or a knife. We worked our way across the tower and removed the sheets in a few minutes. Now that the sheets are out of the way, we need to remove all the hanging hardware that is no longer needed. Be careful as this is fairly heavy. You'll need a few people to support it and lower it to the ground. Save any screws and grommets that are on the outside casement of the tower. We'll replace them at the end to make sure we don't have any water leaks. At this point, we did a brief cleaning of the tower to remove sediment and broken pieces of sheet. If you have a tower that is galvanized or has any spots that need to be repaired, you'd want to take the time to thoroughly clean, repair, and recoat the inside of the tower. Now we're ready to begin installation of the new fill. Step one is to install the fill supports. First, we need to lay out the base runners per the supplied drawing. Then you can simply snap in all the T-beams and fill retainers. In this case, we're installing five degree fill, so we need to put the retainers in with the top rib facing out. If we needed to do a 10 degree fill insulation, we would rotate it so the top rib is facing in. Get all the components in and use a mallet to fully seat the pieces in the notches. Now we can position and level the fill supports. This tower has a sloping basin, so we will need to shim it in a few places to get it level. PVC or FRP pieces work best for this. First take a front pack, in this case a standard pack, and position it at the bottom against the retainer. Then move the fill supports as needed to get a good fit with the top retainer. Double check the levelness and adjust shims as needed. Now, you want to add the rest of the fill packs in the row. In our case, this is a CF1900 stuffer pack and an integrated drift pack to make sure everything fits nicely. Here we also had to trim the back of the fill supports to make sure we could remove the strainer basket for cleaning. Go around making sure the fill supports are positioned square in the tower and check shims and levelness one last time. Now you can start placing all the fill blocks. To install the blocks, simply line them up on the supports, making sure you have a tight fit with a consistent repeating pattern at the louver and drift faces to prevent any water escape. The packs are directional, so make sure all arrows are pointing up as they are placed. Before you can finish the installation, a top retainer needs to be removed. In this case, we chose to remove the drift side retainer, but in other towers, it may, may be better to remove the louver side. Someone can start on this while another person is bringing in fill supports and packs. You may need a little bit of muscle to get the last row of packs in the tower. It's sometimes easiest to put the last row in against the smooth tower wall, but if there is any interference, it may be easier to do the second to last row. We put the IL pack in, followed by the stuffer pack, and then the ID pack. If needed, you can remove the bottom retainers temporarily as well. Once you have all the packs in place, reinstall any retainers and you're done. You should have a nice consistent face front and back with no seams. To finish up, we put the external screws back into the outside wall of the tower. Most of these had rubber grommets, but some silicone sealing can be used if needed. Finally, we placed the new CL80 louvers into the louver channels. The CL80 is nesting and directional, so again make sure you have the directional arrows for airflow and orientation going in the correct direction. Then just nest the rest of the pieces in snugly and reattach the straps. The final product is a tower with a durable, long-lasting Brentwood XF75 Pro Fill and CL80 inlet louvers. We completed this repack with a crew of four people in an eight-hour day with no interruption of our production schedule, and we saw our tower return to original performance with no apparent drift. We hope you enjoyed this video and consider our easily installed and durable solution when it comes time to repack your cooling tower.